get out. Two Charlie Victor just won us. I've never seen the aircraft that before. Is that a new aircraft or? Yeah, it's a new, uh, it's a new personal jet by Sirius Aircraft. Uh, we call it the uh, uh, Vision Jet. Uh, that thing legend. Yeah, that's what I just saw on air that it was a jet and it's made by Sirius. I've just never seen one of those before. Is it uh, basically new that just came out for Sirius or is it something that's been out for a little bit and we just haven't seen them yet? You know, we probably had about uh, 10 of them so far that are flying around the country, but uh, that number is going to be growing here and hopefully be seeing a lot more of us. Everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from the cockpit of the Cirrus SF-50 Vision Jet. I'm with uh, Matt Bergwall, and the back is my colleague Larry Anglisano. And you know what? You, you can call it jet lust or jet envy, but hey, who doesn't like the smell of burnt kerosene in the November morning? 200, and, uh, we're burning a little bit of it up here, but not that much. Looks like uh, 58 gallons per hour to go uh, 288 knots at 304 knots uh, ground speed. We've just left Duluth, it's in the tailpipe, and uh, yeah, we're going to go back there through the magic and of and nonlinear and video and editing, talk a little bit about the airport, the flight plan, then we'll come back up to the cockpit. Here in the middle of August, we're actually we're starting to deliver the Vision Jet to our customers at a rate of one per week. We're expecting to increase this rate up to 2.5 airplanes per week, you know, in, uh, in the next, in the coming years. Um, right now, our current order book is over 600 uh, uh, deposit holders, and uh, we can't wait to get the Vision Jet in, in their hands. The design behind the Vision Jet was really to be that natural step-up aircraft from the SR-22T. So it actually go faster than our current aircraft, that you can carry more people than the current aircraft, and then it can also complete that mission in even more comfort, both on the interior with pressurization, and also you're arriving in style with a jet that looks like it's you know straight out of the it's from the future. So right now our, most of our order books have people who have uh, either owned or have owned a Cirrus aircraft and we do see that uh, not changing for the many years to come but we do see that this aircraft will be used uh, quite a bit for even just a regional uh, transportation mission. It is kind of early to really say what the typical mission is, but I mean, we have been seeing, you know, that three, 400 nautical mile mission has been kind of the sweet spot of the airplane and where a lot of, is what a lot of our customers have been using. We've been looking at as about $600 an hour seems to be about the, the typical operating cost of, of this aircraft. So the, the Vision Jet comes standard with perspective touch avionics. Uh, seating for five adults, um, you know, the pressurized comfort and just kind of everything you kind of expect from a Cirrus. Um, some of the options we have to, to offer is uh, things like weather radar, uh, kind of TCAS-1 traffic systems. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, a, a six and seventh seat for kind of smaller uh, individuals. Uh, we call them cross-country seats. You can get cargo extend in the baggage compartment. You in, also, you can start getting into some premium paints and interiors. And here's a good place to look at some numbers, starting with the Vision Jet price. The base price is $1.96 million, but most buyers get all the options, so figure it's a $2.2 million all-in airplane. So where does that put it against the competition? Well, there really isn't any, because there aren't any single-engine turbojets, which is why Cirrus sees the SS-50 as being in a class of its own as a step-up bridge from the SR-22. Speed-wise, the Vision Jet runs with this crowd, or close, and all of these are turboprops. As you can see, Piper's M500 is the closest. It costs about the same, has similar best-case range, but it's slower. The step-up M600 isn't as fast as the Vision Jet either, but as a turboprop, it's a little more fuel-efficient. It's also a lot more expensive at $2.8 million. Looking upscale, small jets like the Embraer Phenom 100, the Cessna M2, the Honda Jet, and the Eclipse are all faster than the Vision Jet, and except for the Eclipse, they're larger and heavier. They're also twin engine designs, meaning higher operating costs, and that's why Cirrus pitches the Vision Jet as a step up from the Piston SR22 and not a competitive entry-level jet. Here's some more numbers. The Piston SR22T has a typical useful load of 1,150 to 1,200 pounds. In the low flight levels, it cruises at a little over 200 knots. With full fuel, it can fly about 900 miles in still air with a 45-minute reserve, say Denver to Cincinnati. That'll take about 4 hours and 45 minutes. The Vision Jet has a useful load of about 2,400 pounds and it carries a ton of fuel, literally. 
296 gallons or 2,000 pounds. That leaves 400 pounds for people and stuff. On a standard day, the Vision Jet cruises at an honest 300 knots in the mid to high flight levels, but a little less on warmer days. That's good for about 1,100 to 1,200 miles in still air, or Denver to Pittsburgh, with an hour left in the tanks. That will take about four hours of cruising. In the SR-22T, allowing for a fuel stop, the same trip would require almost seven hours. Load the Vision Jet with four people and luggage, and it's an 800-mile airplane. Your trip from Denver to Pittsburgh will need a fuel stop, but you'll still make it in under six hours. Of course, speed in airplanes has never been cheap, and it's not in the Vision Jet either. Denver to Pittsburgh will cost you 900 bucks for Jet A in the Vision Jet, and about $460 worth of avgas in the SR-22T. Add maintenance and overhaul, and the operating cost delta for the jet is three times the cost of the piston. That sounds like a lot, but thanks to this engine, the Williams SJ33-5A, the Vision Jet is impressively efficient for a jet. It's got 1,800 pounds of thrust, vectored up to account for the engine's angled mounting. The exhaust goes between the V-tail stabilizers and rudder vaders, so it doesn't turn them black with soot. The engine is FADEC equipped, so starting it is almost unnervingly simple. Just switch a knob to run and push engine start run. It does everything else, including motoring the engine in the event of a hot start. Airport neighbors shouldn't really notice the Vision Jet much. On startup, it's quiet except for the initial light off. Takeoff is similarly low key. The center mounted engine masks the noise signature from below and the V tail blocks it from the side. For this shot, the camera is about 200 yards away. Let's back that up for a minute and look at something, a little closer here. Compared to other small jets, say the Eclipse 500, the Vision Jet isn't exactly what you'd call sleek. It has a bulbous egg-shaped profile. There are reasons for this, and one is that as a single, there's only one place to put the engine without sticking it in the tail as Piper did with the Piper Jet or ducting it as Diamond did with its D-Jet. But the best reason appears to be cabin access. The Vision Jet's cabin is quite large and access to those middle seats is easy without having to crawl. Similarly, cockpit access is easy because the pilot seat slides all the way to the mid door line. You can enter this way or from the mid cabin between the pilot seats. Either way is easy and so is getting out of it. No problem getting into the rear center seat, but the seats to either side are just a little tight. I wouldn't call them kitty seats exactly, but there's not a lot of leg room either. Nonetheless, you can still get five adults aboard, in which case the Vision Jet is a three-hour airplane with an hour in reserve. So one of the cool things in this airplane is you immediately notice on getting in it is the visibility, and you really notice it in flight. The, the A-pillar is almost as if there isn't one. It's all the way back past my shoulder, so I've got some 360 footage Delta here. Delta 410 contact. Uh, Winnipeg 133. What I see from the cockpit, uh, which is basically no obstruction Delta, 14, other than the center post. FedEx 3034 contact. Then I can see all the way uh, back to the wingtip and good visibility behind that. Really, a lot of attention paid to the size of this windshield, and then we'll show you some footage from the rear seats. Uh, the visibility back there is is just terrific. One serious design goal for the Vision Jet was to make it ergonomically similar to the SR-22. After a fashion, it is that, but I wouldn't say it flies like an SR-22. It has heavier control forces, especially in pitch, and when I knocked it off the autopilot to hand fly it at high altitude, it took concentration to do it accurately. The airplane is clearly designed to be flown by the autopilot, and we engaged it 500 feet after takeoff. Yeah, you fly the Vision Jet, but really you operate it through the Garmin G3000 suite and the GFC 700 autopilot that goes with it. 
Just about everything is input through these touchscreen controllers on the lower panel, and virtually everything on the airplane is automated. The avionics monitor all the systems and warn the pilot of any abnormals that need attention. The autopilot has envelope protection to protect against overbanking and over and under speeds, and yes, it has a Cirrus trademark ballistic parachute. And I know you're thinking, hey, you can't pull that thing at 300 knots, can you? No, you can't. Pull the handle above the 143 knot deployment envelope and the autopilot will take over and slow to that speed before the parachute gets loose. To accomplish this, the autopilot has limited auto throttle authority to idle the engine. The G3000 is arguably easier to use than the G1000 that preceded it, but it also has deeper functions. Because of that and the fact that turbojets require a type rating, Cirrus has invested heavily in a training program for the Vision Jet. You know, an important part of transitioning to the left seat of the Cirrus Vision Jet is doing the transition training. You need a type rating to fly the airplane. Now, Cirrus is in the process of moving the training from Duluth down to the Vision Center down in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm here with Rob Haig, Chief Pilot at Cirrus. Rob, tell us a little bit about what a customer might expect. Uh, now, the training transition starts long before the owner even takes possession of the airplane. Absolutely. So, so first of all, let's set the groundwork here. We're training, we designed a training program specifically for owner pilots, meaning that the person who purchased the aircraft would also be the person that's up in the front of the aircraft flying, flying the airplane. And that's not typical for a typical turbojet powered aircraft. Usually those aircraft are, are piloted by professional pilots or crews. Um, this airplane is designed for a single pilot but more specifically designed for an owner pilot with, with that level of experience. So we created the entire training program or we designed this training program to be appropriate and, and give the owner pilots all the tools necessary to be successful in this type rating training process. It does start early. We start, we start focusing on instrument competency. That is a core skill, that's a core competency that we need that sets the platform. And so we wanna make sure, we wanna make sure where all of our customers are at, we wanna make sure that they have the confidence necessary that they're ready to start the type rating training so we can focus on this great airplane, not necessarily on some of the more basic instrument skills. We also, we spent um, a lot of effort going through and creating an e-learning suite. Um, this is an online course where there's roughly eight to 10 hours focused on all the aircraft systems, but there's also eight to 10 hours focused on the turbine environment, the high altitude environment, the subjects like hypoxia, um, high altitude weather, radar. Radar's a, a, a new piece of equipment, a new tool for a lot of our customers um, transitioning into the vision jet. So we cover those subjects and that allows them to start studying on their own. Uh, so tell me about your personal adaptation to this airplane. Was it a, is it an easy? transition for you? So I have probably over, uh, the majority of my time has been the SR-22 and SR-22 T-Series aircraft. I actually did not have any turbo exp or uh, any uh, turbine experience uh, before kind of entering yeah, into this aircraft. Yeah, we're Thanks for the help. Clear, um, Just being having the airplane right, so familiar to no the SR-22 and the SR-22 T has really helped me with the transition where, uh, yeah, the type rating, the type rating course was, um, I, it, it took, uh, I mean, it took studying, it took, you know, some work, but when it was all said and done, you know, I felt very comfortable, very confident, you know, after I got out of the, the, the type rating that I could fly this aircraft, and then went into the mentorship, got some real world experience, and then, you know what, I, I mean, I was ready to fly the Vision Jet, and I have almost 300 hours in it now, and it's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been an awesome, awesome 300 hours. The Vision Jet is limited to flight level 280, and it spends most of its cruise time at that altitude or at 270 eastbound. That gets it above most of the weather, and since those flight levels are below the heavy jet altitudes, direct routing is common, saving both time and fuel. The Vision Jet has excellent weather avoidance with onboard weather radar and data link weather from Sirius or via ADSB. It also has a forward-looking infrared camera. We used all three of those on our flight to Michigan. For ice protection, it has boots on the lifting surfaces, a heated engine inlet, and TKS on the nose and windshield. We use those too. 
Getting to and from cruise altitude is usually done on autopilot, but the airplane is not so fast in this configuration that you'll fall far behind it. In climb, it does about 155 knots indicated, and we'll get to cruise altitude in 20 minutes. Approaches are flown at 140 knots, but 95 knots closer to the runway. Right, slow down to 140 as we get into the final. Runner 2226, clear direct dam. We at about 120. Direct dam. That's going to be about 25 percent power or so. Okay. Um, as soon as we kind of hit. Number two zero, Charlie. Just advise if you get in harbor in sight. 12 o'clock. One zero miles. Dot above. We're going to be uh, flaps 100 percent, or first the gear down, and then okay. the flaps 100 percent. Okay. And about 30 percent power is going to be at about to get it. Um, 10 knots above the VRF speed. Okay. So the VRS speed is going to be indicated by a green donut that's on the airspeed tape. And uh, so you want to be about 10 knots above that. And it will have calculated VRS, but it knows the weight. Exactly. It knows the weight. It also knows there's an angle of attack indicator that it knows as well, so it uses all this information to calculate it that certain um, and, and what are The, the gear and flap VRF? speeds are high enough so you can throw a lot of drag out if you need to slow down in a hurry. Sears says the airplane is supposed to land like an SR, and it mostly does, apart from those heavier control forces I mentioned. I'm going to drive it down on the center line there. There you go. All right, just start bringing that power out a little bit. Keep that nose come down. All right. Powers should be out. All the way down? Yep. Don't. Yeah, let's get that nose down a little bit. There you go. Let's do a little bit of update now. Get that nose down. There you got it. Hit. Very enjoyable trip. So what are, what's our summary here from uh, Duluth to Pontiac? An hour and 49 minutes. That was total how many miles? That was over 500 miles. 500 miles? 500. Okay, we landed with about 130 gallons. Correct. Very good. Yep. So that's what it's like to fly the Vision Jet. Uh, my colleague Larry Angelsano will have a full article in the October 2017 issue of Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching and thanks for the fight. You're welcome.